Sunday, June 6, 2021. In that fourth verse of the 85th number of the Psalms, I want to take two words and move on with the message for the day. Those words are turn us. Turn us. Subject for the message is turning the church. Turning the church. This church has been styled by the poets as a ship, a ship of Zion that had landed safely many a thousand. This church caught up in this COVID-19 world and it needs to be turned. My good friend Reverend Jesse Jackson says that the church is our power station. Yes, the church is. It's our power station in many, many ways. Political power, spiritual power, economic power, social power. The power station that done got bogged down need to be turned. And this 85th number of the Psalms, it was written, it was written after the Jews returned from captivity in Babylon. Written at a time when they still felt the stings of God's displeasure or somewhat partially lingering under the chastening rod of God. They were no longer slaves under Babylonian rule, but they still felt the few of the stings of God's displeasure. And so I have elected and decided to compare the captivity, slavery of the Jews to our to the slavery of our own ancestors here in America. Although President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation ending our bondage. Much was still needed in order for us to really embrace freedom. My friend, I serve notice on you today that much is still needed. Uh, in 2021, if the ancestors, if the slaves, if the descendants of our slave ancestors is to feel or are to feel and experience real freedom. Some have argued that slavery still in existence just by another name. So, it was in the general interest of all of the Jews, the entire Jewish congregation, 
it was their general interest and condition that motivated the writer of our text to write this 81st number of the Psalms. This was a dark and discouraging condition under which the Jews existed. Uh, and if I use the concepts and ideas of old Lester Roloff, I might be able to get you to see my point. Lester Roloff was a Texas preacher that I listened to in the 70s, late 70s, who said that the government grew out of the church exactly as a tail grew out of a dog. And Lester went on to crack me up by saying, nowadays, the tail is waggling the dog. Dog not waggling the tail. The tail is waggling the dog. Dark and discouraging conditions. What we look at today. Dark clouds above, raging waves below, discouraging. Doesn't seem like it's going to be no end to this bondage. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Did you ever feel powerless? And just didn't know what to do. You ever been in a situation where you needed the hand of God to turn you? The church needs to be turned. The church leaders need to be turned. The ship turns slowly. Today, my friend, our, our power station, the church, needs to be turned. A, ch a church, a power station, is somewhat analogous or somewhat like Noah's Ark, floating between life and death, floating between hope and fear. An awful place to be. You could say that Noah, you could say that Noah was between a rock and a hard place. Oh, uh, and so he sent out doves of hope. Sent out one, sent out two. He sent these doves out repeatedly to find out if there was dry land, if there was a peaceful shore on which he could land his troubled vessel. After he sent out many doves, that last dove that Noah Praffle had sent out came back to his boat with an olive branch. Peace, an olive branch of hope and good news. Let me say something about the purpose of our text here. That 85th number of the psalm is just rich. It's a prescription is a medicine for the soul of our church. What is the purpose? Our power station under COVID-19 attack seems to be powerless to turn itself. Yes, 
our power station, our value-influencing institutions. There's only two value-influencing institutions in our communities. That is the church and the school. <sighs> Both under attack, powerless to turn itself. Afflicted on the one hand, distressed on the other hand. The only hope is a medicine that is contained in the 85th number of the Psalms. It serves as a road map. A road map drawn by God. Yes, sir. In verse 2, the writer reminds God by way of petition. He reminds God of the things that he has done. And this is what you need to do if you want to get out from between that rock and the hard place that you're in. Remind God of the things that he has done. Put God in remembrance of his great works. Put God in remembrance of his precious promises. Put God in remembrance of his power, his purpose. Talk to God in prayer. Not just careless, solicitous prayers. Talk to him in the sinner's prayer. Tell him, dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. That's the starting point. Tell him I know that I'm a sinner and that I believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. And I'm sorry for all the wrongs that I have done. And I ask you to forgive me. Talk to him good. Tell him, I now accept your gift of eternal life. This is the clincher right here. Tell him, I thank you, God, for your love. I thank you for your forgiveness. And I thank you for the new life that I can have in Jesus Christ. Whew. From this day forward, I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. That will turn our power station it will turn your soul, that sinner's prayer, talking to God right. Turn darkness into light. Turn you off the road to hell to the road to eternal life. So my friend, God will turn you if you talk to him and talk to him right. So now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of glory with exceeding great joy. Now to him, the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now, henceforth, and forevermore. The church can be turned today, my friend. Goodbye.